Welcome back. So that car alarm has been going off for the past half an hour, and it continues to siren even now. However, I've decided to continue on despite it, so let's continue. So we now need to show that if x is an infinite set, either countable or uncountable, that the cardinality of its power set is still going to be provably greater than uh, its own cardinality. So to do this, let's just remind ourselves a little bit about how you show that two sets in infinite set theory have the same cardinality. So let's suppose that we have two sets, x and y, and we want to show that they have the same cardinality. How do you do this in infinite set theory? Well, it's exactly the same principle as in finite set theory. You need to show the existence of a bijective mapping from one set to the other set, i.e. a one-to-one -one mapping that is onto. And remember, that's exactly what we were doing um, in finite set theory. So remember, up here we have a beautiful picture. So if we imagine taking the set of all singleton sets, so get rid of this bit, then we have this beautiful bijective, i.e. it's one-to-one -one and it's onto mapping from the set X onto the set of all singleton sets from the set X. And that then shows us that um, the cardinality of the set X and the cardinality of the set containing all the singleton sets is equal to uh, each other. So same principle as from finite set theory, you need to show the existence of a bijective mapping. And if you can find such a bijective mapping, then that proves that the two sets have the same cardinality. The difference and the thing that people get tripped up on um, is that in finite set theory, you can prove that such a bijective mapping does not exist, i.e. the two sets do not have the same cardinality, by finding a mapping that is injective but not surjective. And that's exactly what we did here. So we took our power set here and we found this mapping that was injective, i.e. that went onto all the singleton sets, but then wasn't surjective because there were all these sets that weren't included in the range of this mapping. And therefore we used that to conclude that the two sets were not the same cardinality and indeed that the power set had a greater cardinality. You cannot do that in infinite set theory. That logic no longer works in infinite set theory. So you cannot merely prove the non-existence of a bijective mapping by finding such an injective mapping. And here is the uh, evidence for that. So if you imagine taking the natural numbers, which is a beautiful infinite set, it's a countable infinite set. So here we go. The natural numbers, remember, are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The counting numbers. Now, I could create you a mapping from the natural numbers to the natural numbers. So we'll put them here again. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And the mapping that I could create you is you map every natural number onto two times that natural number. So you double each of them. So you'd map 1 onto 2. You map 2 onto 4. You map 3 onto 6. Obviously, we don't have 6 here, but I'll just add it on, etc. And you can go on like that. That mapping will take every single member of the domain here and map it onto an element of the codomain. It will be a one-to-one -one mapping. Every single element here is going onto an element here and no other element in the domain will be going onto that element. So only one is going to go onto two, none of the others are going to go onto two, etc. So it's going to be one-to-one. -one. However, it is not subjective. It is not um, onto. There are loads of elements quite clearly here, one, three, and five, that uh, are not being mapped onto. And if it was the case that the existence of an injective mapping that was not subjective proved that the two sets did not have the same cardinality, then you could then conclude that the natural numbers does not have the same cardinality as the natural numbers, which obviously is rubbish um, because the two sets are the same set. Um, so there is the proof that you cannot use this logic from finite set theory, which is that if you can find an injective mapping that is not subjective, it proves the non-existence of a bijective mapping and that it proves that the two sets do not have the same cardinality. That bit of logic from finite set theory goes in infinite set theory. So in infinite set theory, the way to prove that two sets have the same cardinality is the existence of a bijective map. And to prove the non-existence of a bijective map, it is not enough merely to show the existence of an injective map that is not subjective. And here is the proof that that is not enough. So, 
How then do we go about showing the non-existence of a bijective map between uh, the power set of x and the set x if we want to show that they do not have the same cardinality? Well, this is an absolutely beautiful argument. So it's a proof by contradiction, and it goes like so. So suppose, for a moment, remember we want to contradict, so suppose that the two sets do have the same cardinality. That would mean that there should be a bijective mapping from the set x to the power set of x. Let's imagine that bijective mapping. So we're going to have our elements now, um, and I'm just going to put some of them here. So obviously it's an infinite set, but we will just have this, a few elements from that set. So we'll have x1, x2, x3, and this isn't supposed to imply that it's a countable set. I just want to you know, I just want to call some of the elements from this set x something, so I want to put them here. Um, and I'm just going to use x1, x2, x3, x4 as the notation, but this is not supposed to imply that it's a countable set. It could be a countable set or an uncountable set. We've just got a few elements from this set. We're just starting off our, our list here. Um, and then if a bijective mapping existed, then every single one of these elements x1, x2, x3, x4, would be being mapped onto an element of the power set, i.e. they would be mapped onto some subset of the set x. So each one of them is being mapped onto a subset. So I'm just going to put them here. These are representing subsets from our power set of x. Now, what we want to prove is that if this, this we're supposing this is a bijection, so we're supposing this is a bijective map, what we want to prove is that this cannot possibly exist. We want to prove that this is not a bijective map. So we're supposing this is a bijective map, and then we're going to find a contradiction. We're going to find how logic fails, and we're going to prove that it cannot possibly be a bijective map. And the way that we're going to prove that it's not a bijective map is by proving that it's not onto, that it's not subjective. And how do we do that? Well, we do it by finding a set in the power set of x that is not going to be mapped onto by this mapping. And how can we do that? Well, this is an absolutely brilliant argument, and this is, this is the crux of this video. This is the most important bit. This is beautiful. I really, really love this. This is why I made this video, to explain this. So, what you do is you say, OK, this first element that we're looking at here for our bijective mapping it is an element of the set x, and therefore it is either going to be in this subset or it's not going to be in this subset. Remember, all these subsets that we're mapping onto here, they are subsets of the set x. These are elements of the set x. So this element x1, it possibly might be in this subset or it might not be. It, there's two options. There's a binary option here. Either x1 can be in that subset, like so, or it's not in that subset. So those are the two possibilities. So what you do is you say, let's look at this subset that we're mapping x1 onto, and whatever the answer is as to whether x1 is in that subset or not, you take the opposite answer. So let's suppose x1 was in that subset, then we're going to construct a subset over here that cannot possibly be in our range of this bijective mapping. And the way we're going to start it off is we're going to say, OK, let's suppose x1 was in this subset. We'll take the opposite answer, so we will not put x1 in our subset over here. So we'll construct a subset that does not contain x1. And the brilliance of this is that if it has the opposite answer to this subset, then it cannot possibly be this subset. So I just want to clear this up so um, because the picture looks wrong now because I've put a cross through this one. So I'm just going to rub that out. So let's suppose, we're supposing that x1 was in this subset, and therefore in our subset that we're constructing over here, we're not going to have x1 in it. Now let's move on to the next one. So x2 is being mapped onto this subset, and again, x2 is either going to be in that subset, or it's not going to be in that subset. So there are two options. The subset that x2 is being mapped onto can either contain x2 or it cannot contain x2. Let's suppose it doesn't contain x2. Then, in our subset over here, we would put x2 in. And we'd go on like this. So for x3, it's being mapped onto a subset of x. And that subset is either going to contain x3 or it's not going to contain x3. And let's suppose that it doesn't contain x3. 
then again, we would put x3 in our subset here, and you see the brilliance of what we're doing. We're constructing a subset here, this subset over here, that cannot possibly be in the range of this bijective mapping, because we're making sure that it is not equal to any of these subsets. You could go on like this. So we've made sure it's not equal to this subset, because we didn't put x1 in, and x1 was in this subset. We've made sure it isn't equal to this subset because we have put x2 in and x2 wasn't a member of this subset. And then we've made sure it isn't equal to this one because we've put x3 in and we have made sure that an x3 wasn't in this subset. So you can go through this entire bijective mapping here. You can go through the entire range and for each one you can say, does it contain the its respective element in the set x that is being mapped onto it or not? And then you can put the opposite answer for your set that you're constructing here. And by doing that, you make sure if you went on and on like this and you imagine doing this for all infinite numbers of elements, you imagine going through the entire set X and doing this same procedure, carrying on like this, doing this for absolutely every single one, then you would eventually end up with a set here. And that set would be a subset of the set X. So it would be an element of the power set of X and it would not be equal to any of these subsets in the range of this bijective mapping. So it would be an element of the power set that isn't being mapped onto by this mapping. And that proves that this mapping that we supposed was bijective is not bijective. It's not subjective. It might be injective, but it's not subjective. And therefore, no such bijective mapping can exist. And in particular, it fails on the subjective criteria. And therefore, you can always prove that there's going to be an element outside of any mapping from any injective mapping from x to this power set. And therefore, we have proven that the power set of x is larger than the set x. That, in my opinion, is an absolutely beautiful argument. And I just want to go over it again, um, just to make sure that it's gone in. So we were saying, we want to prove that no such bijective mapping can exist between the set X and its power set. In particular, we want to prove that where it fails is being subjective, i.e. that there's always going to be an element in the power set that is outside of any attempt to make a bijective mapping, because that would then prove that the power set is bigger. It has a larger cardinality than the set X itself. So the way we did this is through proof by contradiction. So we suppose the existence of a bijective mapping, and that's what this is here. So we're going through all the elements of our set X, and we're mapping them onto an element of the power set of X. They're being mapped, therefore, onto a subset of the set X itself. Now, so we suppose this map is bijective, and we now want to prove there's a contradiction here, that this mapping cannot possibly be bijective. And the way we're going to do that is by proving that there is an element in the power set that is not mapped onto by this mapping, and therefore this mapping is not subjective, not bijective, and therefore the two sets do not have equal cardinality, and indeed the power set has a larger cardinality than the set X itself. How do we do that? Well, we gradually go through our function. We start off with our first element of our set X. We look at the set that it's being mapped onto, the subset of X that is within the power set. And we say this subset either contains this element x1 or it doesn't contain the element x1. Whatever the answer is, where, if it contains it, then we pick the opposite answer for our subset that we're constructing that is going to be outside of the range of this mapping. Um, so if it contains x1, then we would not put x1 in our subset here. If it didn't contain x1, then we would put x1 in this subset here. And what that ensures is that this subset that we are constructing categorically is not going to be the same as this subset here because it's going to contain the opposite answer. It, uh, it's going to be opposite as far as x1 is concerned, i.e. if it, this one contains x1, it doesn't contain x1. If this one does con it doesn't contain x1, then this full one will contain x1. And then we go on, we go to our next uh, element of the set X, we look at the subset that it's being mapped onto, and again, this subset will either contain X2 or it won't contain X2. Into this subset, we put the opposite answer. So if it doesn't contain F2, we put X2, we put X2. If it does contain X2, we don't put X2. And that then ensures that this subset is not equal to this one here. And we can go on and on like this for all the elements of X. And thus, we can make sure that we are constructing a set here, a subset of our set X that is not equal to any of these subsets that are in the range of this 
supposedly bijective mapping, and hence we have an element of the power set that is outside the range of this bijective mapping, hence this mapping is not subjective, hence it is not bijective, thus we have contradicted the existence of bijective mapping, thus we have proven that a bijective mapping cannot exist between the set X and the power set of X, and thus they do not have the same cardinality. And in particular, we have proven that whenever you try and construct a bijective mapping, the way that it is going to fail is in subjectivity, that there is always going to be an element in the power set of X that is outside of this injective mapping. And that is then good enough proof to prove that this one has a larger cardinality than this one. So thank you for watching.